I am optimistic, positive, and excited about chiropractic, excited about reaching people with my practice and building an exceptional life of productivity, prosperity, and generosity while filled with love, fitness, and of course, having a great time. Our purpose is to become smarter, more powerful, more capable, more driven, and superior versions of ourselves by ever increasing our awareness, our knowledge, our understanding, our motivation, our hands-on skill, our communication skill, and our mastery in the art of creating an exceptional life. Every single podcast, every time you train with me, of course, you're going to naturally attract more great new patients. You're going to become a more capable motivator and a persuader of people. You'll be empowered to make good and smart long-term decisions. And of course, you'll be energized physically, mentally, and of course, financially. Well, recently we had a major doctor boot camp where I hired a Navy SEAL and a Marine Special Forces gentleman. And we went to San Diego, the Navy SEAL headquarters of the world, right down the road from Top Gun, from Miramar. And of course, right next to Camp Pendleton. This is one of the most uh, recognized military training locations in the world. And that's where we held our doctor boot camp this spring. It is something to train with special forces people at special forces levels. In fact, I wouldn't even say special forces levels, but similar type of training that they have gone through, but simplified for doctor purposes. The mindset, the determination, the thought processes behind people of that caliber one of the instructors graduated. He was one of, he was 14 of like 260. So of the people that qualified, which is thousands, boils it down to 260. And of the 260, he was one of the 14. His name is Ray Cash Care, retired Navy SEAL. You can look him up. The other instructor, Marine Steve Eckert, you can look him up. And here we have these two people teaching a chiropractic boot camp along with myself. And of course, this represented possibly the highest level chiropractor training that has ever been done. Pretty sure of that. So it's no reason why our chiropractors are so successful when we have such high level trainings. In fact, this last week, we had one of our offices collect 23000 in a day and then 24000 the next day, finished the week at like 74000 in collections for the week. That's beautiful work. I think when that office started, they might have been collecting 8000 a week. But they followed the Tory system, the Winner's Edge plan, scripting, the protocols, care plans, the wellness plans. They've advanced into becoming a level four chiropractic office. Followed everything that we teach and now there they are. Want to see you grow too. You're a lot more capable than you think. What we learn from our Navy SEAL people is once you think you have to quit, you have about 40% more left in you. You just don't know it. So those people have an incredible depth of philosophy as it relates to physical training, as it relates to mindset, as it relates to determination, as it relates to this. And this is a topic we've talked about here quite a bit here at Winner's Edge. And that topic is you got to be uh, hard to kill. You have to be a hard-to-kill chiropractor. You've got to be able to withstand the commentary. You've got to be able to withstand all the scenarios with patients. You've got to be able to withstand things that are going to happen with a team. You've got to be able to deal with things in your personal life. But if you're easy to kill, easy to get weak, easy to get uh, off track, 
you're easy to kill. We have to be hard to kill. And we do that through the depth of our philosophy and our belief. I want to take a second on philosophy here today. Foundation of your success. Do we have a philosophy in chiropractic? Or do we have many philosophies and every chiropractor gets to think of their own? Do dentists have a philosophy? Or does that topic ever even enter their mind? Do they sit there and have uh, dental philosophy meetings ever? Are there little uh, degrees or little certifications in you know dental philosophy like there is in chiropractic philosophy? Why do we require a philosophy? Do lawyers have a philosophy? Do medical doctors have a philosophy? Physical therapists have a philosophy? It's a very unique thing that we have a philosophy. And the philosoph philosophical um, considerations are such an important part of our practice. Now, let's define this word philosophy. Check this out. A particular system of thought. The study of the theoretical basis of a particular branch of knowledge or experience. Like the philosophy of chiropractic. Let's take a look at some of the synonyms for the word philosophy here. Ready? Attitude. Doctrine. Great word. Idea. Ideology, logic, outlook, synonyms for the word philosophy. Reasoning, system, a tenet, theory, thinking, thoughts, truth, view. View. Chiropractic philosophy, your chiropractic view. Viewpoint, viewpoint chiropractic. Wisdom. Incredible words. So we have this philosophy thing that floats around in chiropractic. It used to a lot more. It should a lot more now. But does it matter that we have a philosophy? Do super successful chiropractors have a different philosophy than chiropractors who are not as successful? I have personally found that by far the most successful chiropractors I've ever known have a depth of belief and philosophy that is like granite. It is like bedrock. Chiropractor is not doing that well. A little bit easier to sway in their view and viewpoint and their attitude and belief system. Let's take a look at a couple things here see what we can learn. Here we go, 1927, R.W. Stevenson. This book is so incredible that just reading any bits of it is enlightening. The quality of the writing, the quality and soundness of the thought processes. Uh, I'm not sure if modern people could write stuff that's this clear because we have so many distractions and so much corruption going into our head. But let's take a look here. Chiropractic defined. Chiropractic is a philosophy. Hold on, what did it say? It's a philosophy, not many philosophies. Does every chiropractor get to determine their philosophy? Don't mind that car going by. Chiropractic is a philosophy, science, and art of things natural. A system of adjusting the segments of the spinal column by hand only for the correction of the cause of dis-ease. Isn't that incredible? Oh, I suppose if you wanted to bend this a little bit, you could say that uh, an instrument could be an extension of the hand. But that's still not the same as adjusting by hand. Hands-on skill. Now, there's a couple other ones written in here. Let me read them. Here's the next one. Chiropractic is defined the science of palpating and adjusting the articulations of the human spinal column only. That was another 
potential definition from 1927. And there was one more here. A system of adjustment considering a palpation of the spinal column to ascertain vertebral subluxations followed by the adjustment of them by hand in order to relieve pressure upon nerves at the intervertebral foramina so that the nerve force may flow freely from the brain to the rest of the body. So I just read three different definitions of chiropractic. But let's see what the remarks are here. The first definition is Dr. Palmer's and it is the best. It tells exactly what chiropractic is without limiting its scope and without saying things which are not true as the others are inclined to do. So let's go again. Chiropractic is a philosophy, belief system, tenet, doctrines, theory, viewpoint, science, that's the anatomy, physiology, biology, and art. And there's where the uniqueness of each individual person applying this comes in. Of things natural. You might say God-made versus human-made. A system of adjusting the segments of the spinal column by hand only for the correction of the cause of dis-ease. That is so remarkable. It's so sound. It makes so much sense. It is absolutely incredible. And what we have in chiropractic today is chiropractors taking the philosophy and sort of watering it down to their level instead of elevating themselves to it. Let's take a look at one other book here. Big Daddy from 1910, this guy right here. The Science, Art, and Philosophy of Chiropractic, D.D. Palmer. Check this out. I remember glossing over this. I didn't even care. Then it stopped me in my tracks one day. Look what it says here in the intro pages. Founded on tone. Wow. Founded on tone. Isn't that incredible? What does that mean? Well, we hear the word tone, we can think of muscle tone. We also can think of music, tone, like tune. See behind me here, got the guitar hanging there. That is a Gibson slash special edition Les Paul. In fact, that's the appetite for destruction of Guns N' Roses fame guitar right there. Special ordered that. It's one of my prized possessions. I can't play it very well, but I try. I feel enriched just holding the thing in my hands. In fact, that guitar, it smells good. There's something about the finish on it that smells, it smells like candy. It's amazing. An instrument like that can make you cry. It can play songs. It can bring tears to your eyes. You could plug it into an amp and it'll raise your heart rate in a hurry with power. Why? Differences in tone. But Palmer here is talking about chiropractic being founded on tone. And I think what he may be referring to is when the brain is sending full power down the spinal column out to all the cells, tissues, organs, and glands, we're going to be vibrating at a higher level. Ah, right? On the power scale. But we have subluxation. We start to disrupt that power flow. Blah. Different tone. And tone is the name of the game. High level of tone going from the brain to every cell, tissue, organ, and gland in the body. That's what health is, isn't it? Health is 100% brain power, 100% through, through the nerves to 100% of tissue, 100% of the time, bringing 100% tone. Founded on tone. In fact, you could just say life is tone. How smart, how smart is that statement? Three words. D.D. Palmer, the one who discovered the basic principle of chiropractic developed its philosophy 
originated and founded the science and art of correcting abnormal functions by hand adjusting using the vertebral processes as levers. Perfectly articulated. And I think we should respect it. I think we should respect it. Now, as it relates to philosophy and as it relates to you, here's the name of the game. Okay, here's, here's the payoff as we start to turn this now. Hang with me. Hang with me. All right, so we understand here um, chiropractic has a philosophical foundation. And there's three words that basically comprise the entire chiropractic profession. Subluxation, adjustment, and the word chiropractic itself. Well, chiropractic is easy. we got chiro, which is, means hand, and practic. Uh, we get the word practice or practical. So chiropractic is simply the practical use of the hands. You can't argue with it. The word defines itself. Then we have the word, let's do subluxation in this case, sub, less than, lower, under, right? Lux means light, life, energy. In fact, look at the word light, L-I-G-H-T. Look at the word cough, C-O-U-G-H, cough. So do you see L-I-G-H, C-O-U-G-H? The G-H can be pronounced like an F, cough. So light and life are the same thing. Energy. And in Palmer's case, tone. That's tone right there. Then we have at ion. Sub, less than or under, lux, light, life, energy, and then at ion. Isn't that interesting? We have like a chemistry, physics term in words. Depress. Ion, transmission, transmit ion, relationship, relate ion. Look at all the words that have ion in them. Depression, ignoring the positive and only looking at the negative charge. Transmission, transmit ion, transmit energy, positive or negative. Relationship, relate ion. In, 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 in the case of people, two people's energy fields interacting with, with, with each other in a positive and negative way. Isn't that something? So it's the state of, positive or negative. So it's the state of less light, life, or energy flowing in the body. See, the word defines itself, but yet, why does it that, quote, man wants to go in and make up definitions and put them in books and textbooks and glossaries? The word defines itself, okay? The word defines itself perfectly, okay? All right? And since the word defines itself, I don't know why we want to go in there and, and mess things up so much, but sometimes we have the tendency of wanting to do that. All right? And I don't think we should. And then we have the word adjustment. That's easy. Adjust. Change, modify, improve. Meant mental impulse. That was an easy one. So we have a state of less light life and energy flowing in the body. We want to change, modify, improve that mental impulse via what? The practical use of the hands chiropractic. There. That's a core of chiropractic philosophy or belief system or tenets or view or viewpoint or attitude right there, isn't it? So, what is the most valuable thing that a chiropractor can do? Of all the different things a chiropractor could do, you can go into your office and there's all of these different things you could do. You could show people exercises. You could take them through uh, um, a workout routine, right? You could, you could talk about supplements. You can do stretching with them. You can hook them up to different electrical modalities. There's all the different things that a chiropractor can legally do with their degree. You can talk about weight loss for some mysterious reason, okay? That, for some mysterious reason, that would happen in a chiropractic office. Okay, no offense to those people. I, I just somehow, somehow that doesn't make any sense to me. Chiropractors are chiropractors and weight loss people uh, should be weight loss people, but you know, that's just me. So what's the most powerful thing a chiropractor can do? What is it that a chiropractor can do that could literally take somebody out of a coma? What is the thing that a chiropractor can do that can literally completely change the course of someone's athletic career for the better. What is it a chiropractor can do to save a career? 
What is it that a chiropractor can do that can actually prevent a suicide? What is it that a chiropractor can do that can save a relationship? What is it that a chiropractor can do that can like restore the power going back into someone's leg? Okay, what is it that a chiropractor can do that can restore power going to organs and allow a person to not be taking so much medication? possibly live longer. What is the single most powerful thing that a chiropractor can offer to humanity? Well, that's going to be chiropractic adjustments. Not no no doubt about it. By the way, I could lay someone down and make one adjustment, boom. And 100 hours of exercises could never do that. And 100 bottles of supplements could never do what one really good adjustment can do. Because you're dealing with this mysterious and an incredible force that animates the living human body. And if that force and that power and that intelligence is disrupted on its way to cells, tissues, organs, and glands, we are in big trouble. And there's only one thing on earth that can fix it. Now, some of you out there maybe have never had a bad subluxation. And it's too bad, but I have. And I've had adjustments where I got on the phone with people afterwards and said, that just changed the course of my life. What if I wouldn't have got that adjustment? It would have just rotted out, nerves crushed, organ trouble. I know what I mean. What happens? So there's nothing a chiropractor can do that's more powerful than adjustments. What's the next question here? What is the thing that the chiropractor can do that's the most powerful that takes the least amount of time. Well, that's giving adjustments. What is it that the chiropractor can do that you get paid the most for per minute? Well, that's gonna be the adjustments. If I could get 50 bucks for an adjustment, say it took a minute, let's say someone took seven minutes talking about something else, well, that cost them 350 bucks. See, I could have adjusted seven people and got 350 bucks and they were talking to somebody about doing something else. See, so what's the most powerful thing we can do that takes the least amount of time that actually collects the most money? Well, of course, that's spinal adjustments. And it's too bad that spinal adjustments are minimized. Uh, chiropractic college, I'm not sure how much philosophy is in there anymore. But it's an amazing thing. So we have people in chiropractic today that have lots of different approaches and philosophical foundations. Some people out there want to do a lot of other stuff in the office. They want to spend time with people and do other things. Well, that's a chiropractor's choice. But here's what tends to happen. This is what I want you to consider here. If a chiropractor says, I want to spend time with a patient or I want to do fitness related stuff or I want to do these other things and I come at them and say well the most valuable thing we can do is adjustments it takes the least amount of time you collect the most it allows you to pay off your loans faster and be able to save and it allows you to be much more generous because you have increased income many times people will defend this hang with me now they will defend helping fewer people. They will defend collecting less in their business. They will defend that. They will think that that somehow is better than helping more people and collecting more. I want you just to consider that for a second. Why would a person with a Two hundred and fifty plus thousand dollar degree, where you can earn twelve hundred bucks an hour or more. Why would that person go and do stuff that a twenty-five to one hundred dollar an hour person can do, and then defend it? Do you see here that you might wonder why they don't elevate? to chiropractic awesomeness and why they might be taking chiropractic awesomeness and watering it down to a, a lower level. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I think all these things are important. I like all of them, as you know. I love supplements and I love exercises and I love fitness. My last four offices have all been connected to fitness places. In fact, half of my office is a fitness place. But I don't talk about exercises or fitness with my patients. I refer them to the trainer for that or the nutrition people for that. Why? Because the most valuable thing I can do is chiropractic adjustments. So there's a very important saying here. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. You'll hear me say it many, many times on these podcasts. The needs of the many outweigh the wants of the few. And in this case, the needs of the many outweigh the need of the chiropractor to do what they like. I like exercises and fitness, so that's what I want to talk to people about. Even though I'm a chiropractor with a $250,000 degree, and I should elevate to the power of that and do massive amounts of that on massive amounts of people. All right. So I'm encouraging all chiropractors to elevate their mind from the past, from whatever got put in there early, elevate to the awesomeness of chiropractic. All these other things are incredible. They all have their place. But when I've only got 780 available minutes in a week to see and touch patients, okay? I could spend 10 minutes a person and see 80 people a week, or I could see 400 people a week. I'm gonna argue that it's better to help the 400. I'm going to argue that it's better to have a more successful business. I'm going to argue that it's better to do well financially. I'm going to argue that it's better to pay off your debt sooner. I'm going to argue that it's better to be able to save money. And I'm going to argue that it's better to be more generous. Call me, call me, uh, call me a rebel. Okay. All right. That's the name of the game. And that's what I'm here to do. In my consulting, everything I do revolves around this, how you can help the most people get the greatest results, how you can generate the most referrals, how you can collect an exceptional amount in the, in the lowest amount of square footage in the smallest and most efficient space with the fewest staff members, okay, the overall lowest overhead, allowing you to save the most, allowing you to get your debt as low as possible. See, we want complete chiropractic success and that can happen if we elevate ourselves to how awesome chiropractic really is and we focus on it and we stay in our own lane. Remember now, and it's a very, very sad fact, a smaller percentage of people today go to the chiropractor than did 15, 20 years ago. Why is that? My conclusion is, is because the public does not even know what a chiropractor does now. Is a chiropractor a weight loss person or like a trainer type of a person or a uh, nutrition? What, what are they? People don't know. Everybody knows what a dentist is, <coughs> so everybody goes to the dentist. But chiropractic, okay, we have an incredible philosophy. And I think the more we adhere to it, the more we elevate to it, the more we grab on, the more we advance our technical skill, and the more we're able to help people, the more we're able to help more people, the better it is for the profession. I personally think that the most valuable thing that any chiropractor can do is build a big, big practice. That's what the the best thing for your community. It's certainly going to be the best thing for you. It's going to be the best thing financially. It's going to give you power, which gives the profession power. Gives your family power, your family opportunities and choices. It's the ultimate. So I am here to help chiropractors become as successful as possible with our systems, all our procedures, all of our scripting, all of our money flow, staffing, marketing elements, online, offline, everything within a chiropractic office. Love to see you be in the Winner's Edge group if you're not already. Closing point here, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. So we elevate ourselves to how awesome chiropractic is. We elevate our technical skill. Remember, people who know what they're doing can do it fast. So we realize the most valuable thing we can do are incredible chiropractic adjustments. That allows us to help the most people possible. 
Of course, that allows us to actually collect quite a bit, which allows us to advance financially, which allows us to be able to pay people more and help out them and their families, which also allows us to be more generous in every other area of our life. It's where you win 100% of the time in 100% of all areas, okay? So what are you, Mr. and Mrs. Chiropractor? What do you believe in? What do you stand for? What is your philosophical foundation? And I'm encouraging you to lock in on how incredible chiropractic is, lock into your technical skill, and I want you to compress quality. Put together an office visit that's so incredible, it's compact, but allows you to help the greatest number of people in the greatest way, okay, over the longest period of time. So chiropractic is awesome. Everybody needs it. We've got to have an office. We've got to have the hands-on skill that allows us, allows us to do what? Help the masses in our community. And by doing that, you elevate everything in chiropractic. And just as importantly, you elevate everything in your own life. Tori out.